Welcome back to Face the Facts. I'm Nick Face. Today we have our return of Phil Healy. Hey, I'm doing, Cam down here. I'm doing well. How about you? Yeah, hanging in there. Thanks We've for had another uh, very interesting sports week. So why yeah. not begin right now and try and go over it? We're going to start first with the Red Sox. The Red Sox are in the midst of a hopefully a good stretch being in the playoffs and all. Uh, they have actually had a very good road trip. Uh, they have started their road trip out in Cleveland. They got a win there. They had two wins against Baltimore. They went to Detroit. They had a split. Probably could have won a little bit more there. I see you had and three now we four. find our way yeah. in the lovely land of Tampa. Mm -hmm. So, in my eyes, I feel it's been a successful road trip so far. What do you feel? Oh yeah, I think it's been great. I think like the first game in that road trip, Cleveland, because they weren't they coming back like from a night game and they played just like yes, they were. That, that was the yeah. Baltimore game for whatever reason. The schedule gets approved early in the season, like in January, before yeah. anything gets come out, anything comes out. What happened was that the Cleveland game was a makeup. It was from April seventh. It was a snow out. Oh, yep, Remember yep. the snow out they Actually, had there. Yeah. So yeah. the Red Sox didn't really have a choice. They had to figure out a way they could play Cleveland that matched up with the schedule. So Monday was supposed to be off. Tuesday, Wednesday, for some whatever reason, it was scheduled a two-game series with Baltimore. Usually you don't have two game series against the team. Usually it's three or four, but for whatever reason that happened. Then they decide, okay, we're going to have a game on Thursday at 1 o'clock in Detroit. And the Red Sox were in a rain delay that Wednesday night. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, I do, yeah. So they had to wait around a little bit. Mm -hmm. Apparently when they were on their way to uh, Detroit, that rainstorm delayed their plane. They didn't land till about 4 o'clock in the morning. That's right, yeah. So they were a little bit tired on Thursday. A lot of people were talking about that. Do you think that was a big deal? Well, I mean, I think just like for anyone, if, you know, you are, if like we're working all week mm -hmm. and we have to, our schedule's all messed up, but just like going West Coast, East Coast to West Coast. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I think they actually proved that there is an actual kind of syndrome that, uh, you know, your circadian rhythm is off, your whole body. Yeah. Chemistry is off. So, yeah. yeah, and also, wasn't it like 11 games in 11 days, too? Or it was in 11 games in 11 days. It was five cities in four yeah. days, something like that, too. Yeah. It, was, it was very tough. Yeah. When you're a baseball player, though, travel is kind of a part of the game here. Sure, sure. So, Farrell just went out there and said, you know, no excuses, no anything. we got to go out there. we got to get the job done. So far, they have done a pretty good job. There's a few games that they could have definitely had. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Sure. But overall, in my eyes, I think it's been a very good trip so far. Definitely things that they need to improve. We're going to go positives first, okay. and then we'll get down on the, sure. on the spectrum of, of the things that we need to hit and attack. First, we need to talk about the pitching, which has been a major weakness of them this mm. season so far. Right now, it's a major strength, specifically starting pitching. Who is your ace on the Red Sox right now? Well, I mean, if you want to judge it on this past week, you'd have to go David Price. Correct. But I would say for the year, Rick Porcillo. Definitely. Porcillo pitched another uh, great, great, uh, great games. He had a nice win against Detroit, his former yep. team, on the weekend. And then he had a very good game, which was another night this week. We like yeah. to keep people guessing on when these shows were taped. <laughs> yeah. But, again, another quality start from him. It was. And he's just been continuing to pitch fantastic, and that's what you want to see from him. The Red Sox will be getting Steven Wright back this weekend, we've heard, and that'll be a big boost to that rotation. Who's, you know, Steven Wright was their all-star pitcher. I yeah. mean, that, that's a guy that's been fantastic, exceeded all kinds of expectations. And how many starts did he miss, like two? I think he missed two. Wow. And it feels like that was from that stupid play where Farrell yeah. put him into pinch run. <laughs> pinch and he run, yeah. screwed up his shoulder. Wait. So I'm looking Hopefully forward to right. Knock on wood. Knock on wood <laughs> that he's going to be okay. Yeah. Um, the next guy is Drew Pomerantz. I mean, Pomerantz yeah. had a great start against the Indians uh, to start off this road trip. And he's looked very solid. Yeah, he's come around. And he's pitching today and he's doing pretty well. Yep. Like he, They were mentioning on the broadcast. Uh, I think during that game and mm -hmm. uh, today uh, that like his, he's getting to uh, batters quicker. Like it yeah. seems like he's kind of maybe he was. Sh I think of, he's finding his groove. Yeah. I think that first start people look into it a little bit too much. Probably a lot of nerves. Yeah, got to settle in a little bit. New team, new environment. I chalk Boston. it up to a learning curve. Yeah, I think what you see from him right now is you have a quality arm that could either start or come out of the bullpen. 
And that's something that I want to bring up in a little bit about okay. where I think Pomeranz may slot in as this rotation uh, figures itself out. Speaking of figuring things out, Clay Buckholtz. Yeah. What in the world is going on with this man right now? I don't know, but keep it up. It's been a, a, a revelation. You see a different pitcher out there. You see somebody who has confidence in himself. You see somebody who is trusting his stuff, most importantly. Where, where is this coming from? Well, maybe, <laughs> fear of not having a job, I guess. Might be. I think that's part of it. Might be. But I, I don't know. And you, you, you strike a chord like his confidence and just how he looks. His body language, his eyes, he looks yeah. like he has just kind of a heat in him that he just wants to, I don't know, get these games under his belt. Like, he's had two great starts. Now, I don't know if you heard about this move. It happened a month ago. And the Red Sox brought in another assistant pitching coach. No, I didn't. His name is Brian Bannister. And he's, uh, he, he breaks things down. He looks at analytics. He looks at the stats. He looks at video and tries to see what might be wrong with a pitcher. Ever since he's come in, and he's been working one-on-one -on -one with Buckholz and a few other guys, whatever he did, he's made Buckholz a better pitcher. Well, you could say that about probably most of them, too, yeah. And I think that this has been in my eyes, the major reason why he's been doing better. The question that we have to, have to, we have to ask ourselves right now, though, where does Buckholz fit into this equation right now? Is he in the rotation? Is he back into the bullpen? How do you throw somebody who's pitching so well in a rotation and put them back in the bullpen? Well, I mean, he's replacing uh, Erod, right? Erod, or Stephen Wright, basically, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, well, when they come back and say, you know, well, that's a good question. It's a good question. Do you throw mm. him back? Is he, is he I can't figure quality? it out. I just can't. Well, I don't know. Do you put him in the bullpen? Because that's where you need the most help. Well, that's where he excelled yeah. when he kind of had this whole new approach and more trust in himself. Yeah. I think he's fine there. He is a starter. Yeah. He is a starter right there. In my eyes, on what you do is you actually do slot Pomeranz into the bullpen. Really? Pomeranz was a relief pitcher for the longest of time. That's right. Yeah. This is his first year in baseball where he's been able to be a reliever. Do you think he'll take that well, though? Well, because I think they're going to say it's an innings, an innings cap. Okay. He's already up to, I think, 150 innings so far oh, yeah, it's in like his most career. In his, yeah. Most in his career. Yeah. This can preserve him a little bit more and probably get the best out of both worlds with keeping Buckholt into a situation that he's excelling in right now. Mm -hmm and strengthening the bullpen, because that's something that gladly and desperately needs some help there, too. And what a good way to kind of transition yeah. into the bullpen. It's been shaky. Yeah. Okay, let's not lie and, and fool ourselves here. It's a lot of question marks right now. But do those question marks come from not having the guys out there? Or does it come from management? And that comes from John Farrell. I think it's a little bit of both. I think, yep. it's, I think it's more... Um, I think... It's easier for Farrell to kind of mess up yeah, with cool. the, the talent he has. Yep. Uh, case in point, la was it last Thursday mm -hmm. when he put in Tozawa? And yes, uh, he, he did. What he ran the number, I guess, I don't remember hearing his argument, but I remember hearing the stats of Tozawa versus the batters versus Kimbrell. Mm -hmm. But at that time, you know, go with whoever's hot. And everyone's yep. been, this is kind of the popular opinion, but, yep. you know, Tozawa hasn't really been pitching that well. So. No, no, and, no. In the no, eighth no. inning, no yep. less. In a one-run game or two-run game? It was a two-run game at the yeah. time. I believe it was 4-2. to two. Okay. It might have been something like that. Yeah. It was a game that should have been won. I know at the beginning of the program we said it was – there was a lot of games that we should have won. In a yeah. way, could have won 11 in a row. Yeah. Dating back to the Yankees, when we had the Yankees back oh, at Fenway okay. there, yeah, there were two games that the bullpen chalked up. Mm -hmm. And, again, that had to do with Zauer a little bit and a drop ball. Um, right. So, yeah, well, Tazawa blowing another one in Detroit, and then you can also chalk up some games against Tampa where they should have won as well. That has to do with game management in my eyes, and has to do with believing in your players that you have. And one person that I feel John Farrell needs to use more and give a clean inning to is Brad Ziegler. Oh, Ziegler okay, has yeah. been a great acquisition from Dombrowski when the Red Sox had their trade deadline. Yep. He came a little bit before. Yeah, like a week right, or so Right before. when Kimbrell got hurt. Yeah. When Kimbrell went on the DL, Ziegler came in and kind of helped give the bullpen a boost, what they needed. Well, I think that Ziegler, who is the person I actually I think, uh, yeah, I think he was not Kimbrell who necessarily Yeah, Ziegler, Ziegler, that's I'm exactly sorry. right. So, so Ziegler's come in and has done fantastic. The problem, though, is John Farrell continues to believe that other guys are, are his eighth inning guy. 
He might put Barnes in there, who will walk the ballpark. He'll put Tazawa in, who will give up three runs. He'll put uh, Robbie Ross in, and he'll walk the park and not be as crisp as possible. Your best combination, for, in my eyes right now, is anything from seventh inning or less, it's a crapshoot. Yeah. You can kind of say, okay, who's available? Fine. When it comes to the eighth, you give it to Ziggler. When it comes to the ninth, you give to Kimbrell. And may I say, too, that since Kimbrell's returned from being hurt, he's been phenomenal. Lights out. A couple shots have been hit off him, but he has not been scored upon, and he's looked dominant. That's what you need. Yeah. Matt Barnes is a person that has had his moments of good and bad for this team. That right there, I think, is your, most, is your biggest wild card. He's a guy that you want to be able to trust more but it's hard to do that when you walk so many guys and lose control. So I don't know where you look at the bullpen right now. Is it something that you think they can work with, or there, is there something that they need to fix right now? Well, it could be like an, an addition by subtraction kind of okay. deal. Um, could they fix it? I mean, you could pick someone off waivers. I mean, there were talk, talks of Pavel Bond coming in. Exactly. But who knows? I mean, do you think Pavel Bond would be a good, addi- uh, good addition? I don't know why it's taking so long. He yeah. still is not signed by anybody. Yeah. Um, he's taking his time. Well, that might and, be a telltale sign of something. Then. In, in my eyes, yeah. I think the problem that you're seeing here is that we saw what Papelbon was like. You really think he's going to do well in an eighth or seventh inning? No. He wants the spotlight. He's a guy that, yeah. that flows off of that adrenaline. He needs to be in the face of the biggest moment of the game. I don't think that he wants to be in the 8th or 7th, and that's why he remains unsigned. He's looking for a closer job. That's so And weird. it's not going to be able to be found. No, I mean, well, well, who, I mean, was he the real closer for the Nationals? No. Yeah, he was the setup guy, wasn't no, he? No, he was the closer, he was, then he got demoted, yeah, then, yeah. He, then he got all upset. Okay. You know, didn't, didn't work <laughs> yeah. out over there. So he got released. Yeah. And I think that he's still hoping and searching for You're probably right. that closer job. I mean, that's probably and what's happening. Yeah. I think he's realizing that he's not going to get it. So he said, all right, then I'm just going to take the rest of the season off. That's such he a has waste. to make that's a move a before waste. September 1st to be playoff eligible. Oh, cause that's, so yeah, we'll find out it. more yeah. in the next few days as August goes on. Well, so here's a question to you, barring like, so you kind of said it a little bit already, but what what's your playoff rotation? My playoff rotation, that's, if I think the Sox will get it, I think they'll no, actually. I think again. they'll get in, yeah. but I think that they'll get in as just the wild card game. Yeah. The wild card game is hit or miss. You have no idea what to expect. It's kind of based off of who can pitch that game for you. A little luck is needed on your side too. Yeah. Right now, if the game is at Fenway Park, and if you can line it up exactly how you want it, I'm giving the ball to Rick Porcello. He's my starter there. It's on the road. I think I have to give it to David Price. I think I do. He's okay. the guy that you spent all your money on, that you put all your eggs in a basket to. I think that you have to give him that shot. You do. But I think that you operate on that with a little bit of uh, the bullpen being tested. Maybe you need to put David Price as your starter, but Stephen Wright is ready to go if something falters. Yeah. So that might be my be- the best plan that you can use going forward. But it's a matter of getting there. And it's going yeah. to be a tough battle because it's a fight right now. As of this moment, the Red Sox are in first place. But that is also with the Blue Jays. <laughs> yep. You also have the Orioles that are a game behind. This is a dog fight. So it's going to be a matter of who's going to get hot and who's going to continue playing consistent baseball. Do they play each other a lot? Or? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yep. September is brutal. We have yeah. it's six games against the Blue Jays. Oh, no. We have, I believe, eight games against the Orioles. I'm not as fearful of the Orioles as a team yep. as I am possibly of the Blue Jays. Even the Blue Jays, I think, well, at the beginning of the year, are pitching really... Yeah. Like, we were out-hitting them. Yes, we weren't we were. out-pitching them. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe that... I think the pitching will outdo the that. Blue Jays. It's the yeah. hitting that will not. The hitting has completely tanked. Well, that's what you were talking about earlier, yeah. too. Completely yeah. tanked, and we'll get to that in just a second. Yeah. But I do think that that September schedule is going to be a grind. We also have the Yankees that could play spoiler in there, too. That's true. So, and do they a, play, uh, a, lot of tri- a lot of traveling as well. Yeah. Do they play uh, Baltimore and Toronto a lot as well? Or is yes, that, yep. right. Baltimore so, and Toronto are in there, too. And the last series of the season good. is against Toronto at home. Really? So 
Yeah, it there could be a, could an, be a, a like playoff game. series right there yeah. in itself at That'd the end of the season. Pretty exciting. I gotta now, say, what's cool about good. these games happening in September is the rosters do expand. So you can right. add on a Joe Kelly. You can mm-hmm. add on uh, maybe a Rusney Castillo or other guys that are in Pawtucket that can help your big league club. Well, so that does help a little bit, how's too. How's Castillo been and how's Kelly? Yeah. Um, I brought Castillo up for a reason, because yeah. right now we're going to transition into the offensive problems. But Ooh. before we do that, we have to interrupt this moment for a breaking news update. Oh, yeah, the breaking news is that Andrew Benintendi is on the disabled list. He got hurt in last night's game against the, Blue, against the uh, Tampa, Tampa Bay. Bay Rays. Excuse me. And it does not look good. Yeah. It looks like he might be out for the season. Oh. So losing Benintendi is a huge, huge blow yeah, to this team. Yeah, they said it was a sprained MCL, sprained knee. He's the, he was a spark. And yeah. he was doing extraordinarily well. Had a great robbing of a home run catch yeah. this past week. He's been hitting pretty yeah. consistently and showing that mm-hmm. he is the real deal. So losing him really hurts. So what will the Red Sox do? And you just mentioned Rosny Castillo, who's hitting uh, very close to 400 in the past month with oh, the Tucket. Nice. He is off the 40-man roster. So that makes it a little bit, a little bit challenging to figure out who they – take away on the roster to add him and put him on the major league club. <laughs> Say goodbye to Zawa. <laughs> I, dis- I think yeah. what you'll see automatically on Friday is a disabled list stint for Tozawa. Yeah. No question about it because Wright has to be activated. Oh, Wright's okay. on the DL. So he has to come off to, uh, to get his spot, basically. Yeah. Now, with Castillo and the whole left field situation, everybody's been getting hurt. No matter who they put out there has been hurt, whether it's Swihart, whether it's Holt, Chris Young, Hanley Ramirez from last year, you get hurt in left field for whatever reason. What I would technically do right now is let Chris Young be my starting left fielder. That's what I would do. He's back. He's healthy. Mm -hmm. He was doing very well before he got hurt. So I would give every opportunity to him to say it's your job to lose, basically. You have Holt there if you need him in a pinch. Brock Holt is not having a very good year. He's just not. He, uh, he, has, uh, he has like a peak. He's had a peak or two, a couple yep. of really good games. But, and, but just has not done uh, up to expectation. Sure. You also have Rusney. You have Ryan Lamar. You have Marco Hernandez. All those Pawtucket guys that could come up if need be. Fair. I think that Castillo is last man on the list for getting anything for left field. He's yeah. failed. He needs to earn it and show what he's worth. And wasn't he? He was pretty much a shortstop, right? He was always left. He was always an outfielder. Oh, really? Center I thought fielder. he was yep. an infielder. Nope. Oh, Mookie weird. Betts used to be the infielder. Okay. So what they should do with um, Castillo, if he's able to catch lightning in a bottle, ride him. Yeah. Maybe they do give him the opportunity. But with Benintendi being out, it has really caused a lot of offensive problems. I'm going to hit the first person who has really not been talked about at all that deserves all the criticism in the world for how he's been playing. That's Jackie Bradley Jr. His average is now down to 270. And yeah. not nobody, Nesson broadcast, radio stations, newspapers, nothing is talking about the struggles that he's had. He's hitting a buck 25, buck 25 since July 1st. Since his uh, streak, right? Since that streak, which was in May, he yeah. has, I'm going to oh, use the word, tank a palooza. Was it in May with the streak? May was the streak. Wow, that far. Oh, that, yep. oh wow. Um, Ever yeah. since that he was inserted into, I believe it was the leadoff spot. Remember when Farrell was messing with the lineup? Sure. It's been nothing but downhill for Jackie Bradley. Well, he's like at the bottom of a lineup now, right? Isn't it? Or is nope. Still... Farrell continues to put him in the fifth spot. Oh, okay. Fifth or sixth. Jackie Bradley excels when he's eighth or ninth. Yeah. And you need to leave him alone. For whatever reason, Farrell continues messing with the lineup and making Bradley do things that he's not supposed to be doing. We all knew back in May that what he was putting up was historic. Yeah. It was not going to happen. Well, you're seeing it right here. Jackie Bradley really is a 260, 270 hitter. On this show back in May, I remember a couple of guys were talking about who is you know, the killer bees, Bradley, mm-hmm. Betts, and Bogarts. Who do you want long-term? We were all high on Jackie Bradley right there. We said, lock him up, extend him. I don't like to be wrong, but I was wrong. The guy that you do extend is Mookie Betts. Sure. Mookie Betts has been MVP-worthy this year. 
and that's a guy that's been as consistent as ever throughout all the games that they've had this season. So Mookie is the person that I look at to really help this team and carry this team. I mean, he's done that a pr pretty good amount of the time this week and past week, so we need to continue to see that production go. Now, Bogarts. Oh, boy. This has been one of the ones that um, I'm frustrated with, not as frustrated as I am with Bradley, but he's number two on my hit list. Yeah. He's a guy that was hitting close to 350 July 1st. Oh, yeah, he has a streak going too, as well. He has a streak going. His batting with, average uh, is Bradley. now down to about 300. Wow. He looks tired. He looks like he needs a week off. He looks like something, something physically is wrong with him. One of the things that I look for when you come to Boston as a player, I'm very critical, but I think that as all Boston fans, we are a little bit, is do you have the mental toughness to be a Boston Red Sox player? Some guys do, some guys don't. I don't believe Bogarts has that. I think that he has all the tools that you need, but I believe he is a quote-unquote soft player. So he'll, he'll perform when he feels he, he He'll he perform has to. when he needs to. Sure. He's not going to be that stud that you, you ride and grind like Pedroia. He's yeah. not going to play the game like Dustin Pedroia. He's you not. Do. You, you do. do. I in, mean, the we, league, in the league, in the you league, in the league, that's true. But Bogarts, it's it's a shame because somebody needs to almost, in a way, light a fire under him and say, "Listen, buddy, you're 23 years old. There's no day offs until the end of the season. Get out there and play. Figure it out." Well, do you uh, do you think playoffs will kind of light a fire under him, or do you no, think that'll I don't. wake him? Really? You no, I don't wake him up. I think this team needs a big kick in the butt right now, I and think... I don't think they're getting that from Farrell. I think if they fired him today. Yeah. And Lavulo took over as the manager. That would be a fire, and they would play better for Lavulo. I think that's a wrong move right now because I, yeah, I think it's wrong right now. Yeah. I definitely do that because he think got. That. I mean, pretty much after this streak, this uh, this road trip, you have uh, Farrell kind of rallied them around to be like, you know, hey, let's get through this, and then we'll, we'll write it because it's not going to get any easier. And I think um, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's weird. I, I Lavulo uh, Lavulo uh, yeah, from last year. Yeah, yeah, he had. Um, he had a great run with him. Yes, and he did. Part of me wants, and I, no one's really brought this up, but was part of that the mixture of possibly the players rallying around Lavulo mm -hmm. because Farrell was in, you know, uh, treatment mm -hmm. for cancer? Would that you think that's a, a part of it? Not to take I anything think, away from him. I think him. that Lavulo is a person that the players wanted to play better for. Okay, I, that's what I feel. I look at him and I and I see a baseball coach out of him. Yeah. I see somebody that gets it that gets the best out of his players, that will not be afraid to get in a player's face and tell them, if you're not going to play hard and if you're not going to do the things that we expect you to do, you're going to sit right here. Farrell doesn't do that. Yeah. To me, I see him as a puppet. He's a puppet. The players play him. And what I mean by that is they run the asylum. Yeah. I feel he loses control a lot, and he kind of lets the, the players dictate too much. I don't think Lavulo does that, and I think that that's why... He was doing a great job when Farrell stepped away when he had the cancer. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I mean, Lavulu's still there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like he... But I think the problem is he doesn't want to overstep his bounds. Yeah, that's possible. That's what, I, that's be, what yeah. I look at, too. And I've heard inside the clubhouse that they have a lot of respect for Tori Lavulu. Sure. So, so what is it? So, Farrell just lets them... I mean, is that, is that the, the I, is that the rumor? I just think he that... has a lay, Leia's kind of, Leia's fair Leia's kind of fair, attitude... Yeah with how he goes about the daily business of baseball. Sure. And I think that that's transitioned over to the players and it's affected their performance. Yeah. I do. I think that his decisions that he's made have been very uh, inept with how you manage a bullpen, how you say that somebody's hurt and then three months down the line they're still hurt, they're still out, and they're not playing. So I think that this has a lot to do with the Benintendi injury right now. They're beating around the bush a little bit, and they're well, saying... Yeah, I don't think they want to jump the gun either. They don't want to jump the gun, but they also, they don't, they don't handle situations like this the best way they can. Yeah. You know, I think every time I, I hear John Farrell speak, I just I t mute the TV. It's just, I, yeah. it's, it's nothing but junk in my eyes. Yeah, I, th I think you, had a, you have a good uh, voice of reason for, for wanting him out, especially for a lot of times this year. I think right now... It, it's weird. It's too late now, but it's, I mean, 
maybe around September you lose five or six games like in the Wouldn't next month. Wouldn't that be like, something? Month? If you do that and then you take away that manager right away, that would well, be historic. Yeah, that'd be nuts. But uh, I think they're going to ride him out. And yeah. I, think they I do think done. they are going to ride him out. Now, what is his safety net? What happens with him? Does, how does he stay as, as oh. manager? Well, how does he stay? They win, a playoff, they, they win a playoff series. So if they don't win the playoffs, is he gone? I think if they get to a one-game playoff and they lose, he's out. Okay. I, think I, that, I believe that, too. Or if they don't make it, yeah. they're out. If they don't make it or one-game playoff, I think, is a yeah. fail in their eyes and he's out. If they yeah. get – let's say they get to the playoffs and they play first round uh, – who's the West Coast? That's uh, the Rangers. The Rangers, yeah. Let's say that Red Sox-Rangers are the matchup and the Rangers sweep them three games to zero. All depends how they play, but – yeah. It's a very good chance he isn't back. Okay. I, I, think I, I feel the same way, yeah. too. I feel that even if he doesn't get out of the division series, he's fired. I think that's – yeah, I, it, I think yeah. depends on how it plays out, how, how it looks. Yeah. If it's like a hard-fought uh, series, yeah. maybe not. Because the Rangers – I'm actually not – like the Rangers were good when we played them yeah. like a month ago or a couple yeah. of weeks about ago. Yeah, about a month ago it was when we played them. And I remember – the, now, they're the team sweep, that but. was during the trade deadline got a lot of players, oh, yep. and they boosted their lineup. That's Carlos Beltran, yep. and then that's the catcher, uh, Matthew, no, Jonathan, Lecro Jonathan Lucroy. Who they got the from? Uh, uh, the Brewers. The Brewers, yeah. And then they got Beltran from the Yankees. Yep. Now, that lineup is pretty, pretty good. Yep. They have Adrian Beltre, former Red Sox yep. player, who was a very, very good oh, player yeah. there. Uh, we had him for a year, They just yeah. don't really have anybody outside of Cole Hamels as a pitcher. So... I do think the Rangers are a better team than the Red Sox. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you that right now. But it's going to be a matter of figuring out how you get to that stage. And I just I don't know how they're going to do it. You got to play small ball. I mean, you got to play small I mean? ball. You got to play smart ball. Yeah. You got to play good management ball. <laughs> Their defense has been better though. I... Defensive wise, they've been okay. It's going to be the matter of they got to get hot. This yeah. lineup. And the other person I forgot to mention too is Travis Shaw. Yeah. Travis Shaw is down to 240s right yeah. now. Still playing third base. Came out a couple weeks ago and said that I need to be playing more because I'm not hitting the ball. Yeah. Well, if you don't hit the ball, you can't play ball. So something's got to happen there with Shaw. Because he, he was great at the beginning of the year. Yeah. April, May, he had a great month. And then he just, he looks like he's put on like 30. He looks like Pablo Sandoval in a way over there oh, at third base now. I don't, so, I don't remember I remember him being a bean pole. Is he that much more? Oh, he, he's, he's got a bump? He's, a he's baby got, bump? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, he's definitely been eating, eating the Pablo Sandoval diet a little bit, it looks there like. So. And where he's, uh, he's, on, he's been on He IR, came right? around yesterday to the team. He oh. looks like he's lost about 20 pounds. Wow. Hey, it's somebody that they have to count on. You know, I'm not as right, big would, on Sandoval, would they but bring next him year. In, would they bring him in the lineup uh Past September. Is they they can't because he's still hurt. Oh, because he's, he's still, still rehabbing. IR? Or? Uh, yeah, the shoulder surgery he oh, had. Oh, okay. So, he's on IR. so that was legit. So that apparently was legit. Okay, then. He, he couldn't lift that Big Mac up they, in his yeah. mouth anymore. Well, so. That's what you got handlers yeah. for. So we hope the Red Sox, I don't know if I should say continue to play well. Play well. Because they're, they're, I can't really say continue. They're playing well, but they need to play better. Smarter decisions, smarter baseball. And not losing games with two errors to end games can also help. Too. I mean, yeah, that didn't seem like a managerial thing either. No. I mean, it just kind of it just seemed to happen. It just seemed to be like maybe Tampa Bay wanted it more, or just yeah. Red Sox were just kind of going through the motions. Not yeah. in a bad way either. Yeah. I'm not. I don't know. It's very bizarre. Get hot, please, Red Sox. Yeah. Please, we need some playoff baseball around here. Just hit good bullpen pitching. That's all. Well, let's talk about our Patriots because Why the not? Patriots are about to start soon, but it's going to be a very different set of circumstances this year than yeah. years past without Tom Brady. So I want to start off with just basically your thoughts on what you see and hear on Jimmy Garoppolo. Well, I mean, from what, I, what I've what i seen, I, I think he can do okay. I think he sits in the pocket for way too long. Yeah. I think that's part. But you can't really – you watch preseason – you have an idea yeah. of what uh, tendencies and things are happening. And, you know, I think he'll probably uh, be picked off a couple times versus uh, Arizona. Yeah. And, or maybe he'll be cautious, and maybe he won't uh, be that brazen. But sometimes I feel like when he is, when he takes a chance on a throw, that's yeah. where he becomes more successful. Oh, Arizona's going to be a big test for him, yeah. real big test. But if is you that look at, at the other, too? that's a way. Oh, okay. That's oh. A, um, wait a minute. No, it is home. All right. It is home. But the four games that are there – you have, I believe, the Bills are week two. I forget who week three is. Well, I don't forget know. Forget who that are is. Are the Jets in, in there at all? The Jets no? might be involved in there a little bit. Yeah, I know. Um, 
But in a way, I feel that they can do a three and one stretch with Garoppolo there. Sure. That's, That's not what I'm looking at the defense to be the big thing that helps win more games this year. Yeah. So if only if Garoppolo's average or whatnot, I think it could be absolutely fine with what they can do for the team. Yeah. I think they'll be okay that way. You still have Martellus Bennett, you still have Gronk. I you like the Julian pair Edelman. on tight end. I like that Bennett, and I like that Gronkowski match. It's so. insane I, how that happened. I don't. Well, it's going to be a lot different than last year because Chandler, in my eyes, was the biggest failure. Oh yeah. In disappointment from the team last year. Totally. Oh, Chris the, Hogan too. We got this year too. Chris Hogan is another player that can yeah. help out there too. Um, I agree with you on Chandler. Panthers is this Friday for a preseason game. Oh, Probably okay. biggest test of the season. That's when it's kind of like the curtain call before yep. everything starts off. What do you want to see in this game? I want to see the defense get uh, after the quarterback. I want yeah. to see uh, a good uh, cornerback play. Yeah. And also I want to see what they're thinking of running back-wise. And I want to see uh, Jimmy Garofalo uh, go down the field. Because uh, Carolina, good defense. Yep. Uh, pretty good, erratic, like when it's good and when it hits. Like uh, mm-hmm. pretty decent offense. And yep. Uh, Newton actually, uh, Newton is a good quarterback. He just needs to yeah. settle down sometimes. Mm-hmm. So Definitely. I mean, yeah, it's Definitely. A, like you said, a big challenge. No, I, I'd like to see that. I'm looking at the running game as a thing that I need to see yeah. something of. Deion Lewis is going to be out for a while. He has to have knee cleanup surgery again. So, so weird. that's a that's a bad loss right there. Yeah. So they're going to put a lot of their eggs in a basket with uh, Legarrette Blunt once yeah. again. I had him actually cut earlier oh, this really? year. I, actually, one of the shows prior to this, I said he might be cut. You know, you can't cut him can't now. Can't do it now. Can't do that now. You need to ride him. No, and you then don't. Tyler Gaffney is my other guy for running back, which I think could really? have an impact too. Good. But you also have to look at James White. He has to take on a bigger role too. Yep. So, I like James we'll White. See. And we have Brandon Bolden as well. Brandon Bolden's not bad. He, he's not bad, but yeah, he's, he's not. A reps. Well, I mean, as long as they have special teams, they'll always have Brandon Bolden. Yep. That's definitely true. So we're looking forward to um, the Patriots coming up. Before we close the show, we do want to go with uh, a little talk about the Olympics. The Olympics were a lot of fun to be able to watch this year. But sadly, it seems like the emphasis just completely turned on Ryan Locke. Oh, I don't Yeah, that guy. I don't. It doesn't matter. It's not a. What a shame, though, because it just took it took every every great thing that happened in the Olympics. Sure. With Michael Phelps and the girls' gymnastics Emily team. Gaines. They named a, a, a maneuver around her. Did they really? Yeah, there's a maneuver that only yeah. she can do. Yeah. She's like Spider-Man, for crying out loud. Yeah. She, I mean, oh, it wells me up. It's great. And they're historic. Um, that group is crazy historic. I just, I, I love seeing the, the swimming with, with Phelps, with setting more records. Yeah. It, what's it, 23 gold medals now for 23 him? 23 or 24, but yep. it's, it's him and Bolt are just kind of like in a yep. league of their own. And Bolt is a guy that yeah. needs also some recognition here, too. I don't think he gets enough. No, I agree. I it's, mean, what a freak athlete <laughs> this guy is. Well, you see when he literally turned, like he literally geared it up, like yep. switched to a higher gear yep. in that mid, like mid-race and kind yep. of like did almost a Bugs Bunny-ish yep. type of like, ha-ha. <laughs> We'll see see you me? Later, That's Doc. all, folks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> did, like, yeah, did a, a road runner. Yeah. Um, and yeah, in the Olympics, it was fantastic. He's gonna, is he going to go down as the best runner of all time? As far as we know. Yeah. Like him and Jesse Owens. Jesse Owens was yeah. the guy I was just thinking of there. I just think that he's in, in a league of his own. Yeah. And I think it was. I don't know. Was that the first time? I don't know. If it was the first time African Americans were able to race in the Olympics, and that was a double. Whammy, because yeah. okay. it was against the Nazis. Yeah. <laughs> 19, yeah. Was it 1936, um... I believe? Yeah, okay, yeah. 1936. Yeah. So, and uh, yeah. it was held in Berlin, right? Yep. And Hitler was there, like, oh, great. Yeah. Um, no, but yeah, Jesse Owens. Yeah. But you say, yeah, Usain Bolt. Yeah, I think he's, uh, you can definitely put him up there, because yeah. it was the three uh, games in a row, right? Three games in a row. Yep, three in a row. And he looks, oh, it's crazy, man. I'll take his body. Any day <laughs> yeah. Of the week. I think I'll we all that. would, and legs and everything. Yeah, oh, it's fine. Yep. And, uh, I know uh, briefly, I mentioned this before the show, but yeah, the Olympic basketball team, which we yeah. should be surprised that they win, but yeah. it's good to see. It was good to see. Yeah. Uh, they, what were they up against? Serbia? Serbia, yeah. which uh, in Spain. The Serbs. The Serbs, yeah. <laughs> poor Serbia. I always feel bad for every, and they yeah. wiped the floor of them. It's good, but yeah. it get, things got close they with did. that team. And it was just kind of like, I guess the, um, the, uh, the adage about it, or people were saying they just didn't play defense right. that well. And that's, well, I mean, 
they were like, okay, we'll play now. Yeah. Which is, and Spain I like as a team. Yep. Because you have the Gasol brothers. And, yep. Yeah. No, I thought that was pretty cool too. From everything that you saw in the Olympics, is there any game that they do or play that you thought was pretty neat to watch or pretty different? I was, t- I was actually, weirdly enough, uh, one of the postmen I see all the time because I do stuff for eBay, mm-hmm. like he loves the Olympics. He was going back and forth about, yeah. I forget which one weird game it was, but uh, volleyball I love seeing, yeah. but water polo was always interesting to me. I, I, that's the one that I was yeah. going to hit on. Water oh, okay, polo yeah. was very, very interesting. And it's a game I don't think that you see enough of. Kind of like when the Winter Olympics happened with um, curling. Curling. Which is a lot of fun to watch, yeah, too. it's crazy. Um, a good drinking games game. Yes, there you go. <laughs> um, but I, I just thought it was, a, it was a great Olympic run that we saw for a place that probably never should have had the Olympics. Yeah, you could say there that about a lot that of places. Many, yeah. many, there wasn't that many issues that we heard of, so luckily mm-hmm. everybody was safe and had... Uh, a sure. good time there, and it was successful. So, um, just with the girls' gymnastics, quickly, I was it. That was another thing I just thought was amazing to see yeah. the, the moves that they were able to pull off. That team, I guess, what do they call themselves? The Dream Team. Yeah, I mean, they it or started Fab Five, something like that. Well, Dream Team was the first um, incarnation when they first started bringing in like real pros because they did college yeah. kids, I think, up until that point. Yep. And other like, um, and not like NBA players per se. And it was like Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, John Stockton. It was like 92, I think. So it was like that era. Is like, you know, you had Michael Jordan, Johnson, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Patrick Ewing, Hakeem, yep. Carl Malone. They're all uh, playing on the same team. Yep. Crazy. But it's I mean, this crazy. was Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, who, who Kyrie Irving, I know you, we've mentioned this before, was the MVP of last year's NBA Finals. Yep. LeBron's amazing, but Kyrie Irving had the shot of the series. Yep. Just in Curry's face. But. Yeah, sort of prattle on. No, I like that. A little history lesson here on Face the Facts. We always like that. Um, Before we close out the show, we always like to finish off the show with a top five of something. So let me put my thinking cap on and figure out what we're going to do for a top five. I think I have a good idea. All right. Top five NFL teams right now. Oh. I'll have mine. You have yours. Who do you think, in your eyes, qualifies as a top five team in in the NFL? Well, I mean... In a league of quarterbacks, yeah. how could you not? I don't know if I can put these in a particular order as like five to. That's fine. But I can name two off the bat. You want to do one? You go one and one. One and one. One and one. Yeah. Uh, I'll go Green Bay Packers. Green Bay Packers. So you like the Aaron Rodgers, Jordy Nelson, I'll coaching be, staff, everything like uh, that. Coaching staff is like I think the weak. Coaching staff isn't necessarily a weak point, but it yeah. isn't. The, they're not the strongest coaching staff in the five. I think yep. that I'll mention, or maybe yep. it'll be up, up up there. But I think Aaron Rodgers with anyone is yep. going to be a deadly combo, whether yep. you have Jordy Nelson or not. Yep. Yep. Let me think. Yeah, I like guys. Green Bay. Yeah. I'm gonna go with Carolina Panthers. Yeah. They were just. In the Super Bowl, they lost to Denver mm-hmm. uh, right there. But I think overall, team a team of good defense and good offense and good coaching definitely can hit the list right there. I yep. expect them to be another playoff, have another playoff run as well. Um, so Carolina Panthers, I put there on my list. Yeah, I think that's fair. And they haven't really lost anyone, right? No, not that yep. I know of. Nope, not much. Not much. Yeah, I would, I, I would definitely put them out there. I mean, another one, I'll probably name them after, but just to keep it you know, uh, fresh. Seattle. Yep. Seattle I'll put because Russell Wilson, once again, and you have yep. Richard Sherman. Once you have a decent defense and you have Russell Wilson. Yep. And is Lynch still around or is he? Retired. Oh, so he's officially retired. retired. But they also have a pretty good, like, like, uh, be- uh, kind of bench or yep. just kind of like, I don't know, just uh, a bunch of running backs ready to go. Yep. So. No, I think that that's another very, very solid team. I was going to say this, the same thing with the yeah. Seahawks as well. I think Pete Carroll has actually... He's been an exception to the rule. Yeah. He's coached in the NFL. He's coached successfully in college. He's coming back. He's won Super Bowls and everything. That's somebody that I don't think gets enough credit. No, I think you're right. I think we're kind of sour on him a little bit. We are sour on him. Yeah, here in New England and at he least. He didn't do a bad job. But no, he, he didn't. He was kind of inherited a, um, a Super Bowl contender. But also, people forget about that year in 96. I don't know if you remember as much. Yep. But it, it wasn't. We didn't get there for luck, but we just our defense was that good, and just we lucked out that we didn't face Denver mm-hmm. in the AFC Championship that year Correct. because Jacksonville ran all over them. Yeah, and Denver was the favorite that year yep. in the the AFC. But yep. 
That's a whole different thing. Another team I'll go with is the Steelers. Even with all yep. the suspensions that might be coming right now with Le'Veon Bell and everything, and as much as people hate Ben Roethlisberger, it's a winning franchise. It's yeah. a winning team. So that's one team that I look at to most likely contend to get to the playoffs again and could be a threat to the Patriots. Yeah, the Steelers are always a threat in the regular season to the yes, Pats. I mean, really even are. yeah, I mean, we kind of have their number in the playoffs, but I I always kind of disregard that every new season. Yep. You never know. And as much as I despise Ben Roethlisberger as a human being, yes. I don't know the guy. But every allegation yes. against him, yeah, I mean, which is a long list. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it's like crazy. It's, yeah, it's a long list, and it's like doesn't feel like he's a good human being. But nope. regardless of that, yeah, I think they're a formidable team. And I guess yep. I, my other pick. So I had. Um, was it Green Bay, Seattle? I'm going to go another team I think is will constantly be on the rise, yep. uh, Minnesota. Yep. Uh, and I think they could win because I, I think it's an easier division for them to win because yep. uh, I don't think Green – well, 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 it's in Green Bay, and it yep. actually came down to like last year. Yep. I actually think they might edge out Green Bay this time. Yep. Now, they have Adrian Peterson, of course. Yep. Any other big names that are on Well, that Teddy team? Bridgewater is Kind of coming into his own a little bit. Yeah, I think yeah. he's more than a game manager, but they just yep. have a really good defense. Yep. And just, like, where they play in the cold. Like, last year they played Seattle in a game they should have won in they the playoffs, yep. but their kicker shanked it. But it was, like, negative eight. Or I yeah. forget what it was. It was something like, crazy. Yeah, negative eight. You're about, I think you're right. It was yeah. something crazy. You're right. I remember it was watching crazy. that game and Seattle got out of there by the skin of their teeth. They certainly yeah. did. They certainly did. I like that pick with Minnesota. Another team that I think needs recognition a little bit, and as much as it might frustrate people around here to hear it, is the Colts. Okay, yeah. Andrew Luck's coming back. I mean, yep. yeah, he was hurt and everything from last year, but that's one of your better quarterbacks in the league. Yeah. Granted, last year was not very good. I think that you'll probably see a different set of circumstances with the Colts here again. Yeah. Um, and the other team, unfortunately, again, is the Ravens. Yeah. For whatever reason with the Ravens, they just don't seem to go away. And the Ravens and the Colts were the two teams behind why Tom Brady is not playing right now. Let's be honest. Here. Oh yeah. So I am pain. It's painful <laughs> for me to put them atop my list. But no, yeah. Well, I I will go back and I will because they have those three and I will go back and I'll say uh, Carolina as well. Yep. And I'm trying to think for a last one. I kind of want to throw for. I mean, I think you've named a couple ones. I'm going to name a dark horse that I kind of want to do well, and I think they might be able to do something. Jacksonville. Okay. I think uh, offensively, I think they'll be able to do some stuff. I like their offense. Yeah. Isn't that the team that they have Alan Kurz and as a receiver? Oh, they, guy. yeah, they have like from last. Uh, they have a couple like they a couple of receivers. I remember yeah. I have my fantasy team, which was exactly. just studs, <laughs> freakish, yeah. studs and freaks. I like that pick. I, like I think that pick. they'll be fun. I think the NFL is, and actually, I think Houston. Will be another like dark okay. horse because I think they're they'll finally probably they'll they'll kind of switch up like Denver will fall back as yep. much as Houston will go forward. Okay, I think because Denver doesn't really have a quarterback right now. No, I'm not putting Denver up there yeah. on my list. They just they have to prove it. They don't have a quarterback. Oh well, yeah. So they have, definitely have to prove it. Of course, the Patriots are number one on my list. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't with think or without to Tom Brady, yeah. without all the injured players there, Patriots are number one here at least yeah. on my list. I'm I sure agree. that goes with you too. It does. Well, that's going to close out another episode here on Face the Facts. We will see you once again very soon. We hope you have a good rest of the week. For Nick Face, I'm Phil Healy. We'll see you soon. Goodbye.